Well, um, hello and welcome again to uh, perhaps the most erudite, uh, the most serious, the most deep, probing and powerful uh, literary video podcast on the internet, uh, Literary as Feck, with myself, uh, Nicholas O. Shia Khan and himself. Cock and balls! There we go. There we go. Perfect. Um, <laughs> so... So we are talking about a writer that uh, that you and I have been fans of for quite a while. Mm. Now, actually, I, I'm trying to think now. You already probably knew who Williford was before we were hanging out. Do you remember what the first thing you read? Yeah, I think it might have been Cockfighter. Okay. Actually. Which I read quite a bit later on. Actually, I'd read a bunch of his other stuff before I ever got to, to Cockfighter. Right. Yes, I remember, um, uh, but then... Hence your hilarious cock and balls. Uh, yes, there we go. Reference. I don't yes. just shout this stuff at random, no. Nick. No, no. no. Um, so, <laughs> and and yes, and turned out that you actually um, were a bigger Williford, or you'd read more Williford than me, and you had a stash of them and then lent them to me, so mm. I caught up with uh, all the ones that I hadn't read. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah, no, a cock, I mean, Cockfight is a good one to start with yeah right? it is a great one it is it is probably without having read everything by him yet but it is it is his classic i think yeah i think so um and also uh you know an incredible film as well which he was involved right in in writing the script yes for... and, and in fact looking at his um uh, looking at his bibliography as well i mean there's a quite a few things i mean i'd like to read all of his stuff if possible yeah one thing jumped out at me is he yes. was a, a, a shooting diary, right, of his time. Yes, I was. De I immediately went to see if I could find any, and it's really hard to find. I was looking for any anything, even a PDF or something. But right. it seems like it's a lot of his through. stuff, especially the nonfiction stuff. I think seems to be pretty difficult to find. Out yeah, of it, and the even university the libraries. Stuff, yeah. Are unfortunately your best bet. I did read one of his books. I read one of his books on writing. He wrote a book basically of short pieces oh, okay. about about writing, uh, and it was great. But yeah, I, I had to take it out of a university is library. That, is that the one? Is that the one about metamorphosis? Or or there's an there's a few he's done. Is there kind of like literary um reviews? Yes. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. It was it was a, it was a bit of a hodgepodge of things, but they were yeah. all great. They were all really yeah. interesting. Well, um, I think that's the thing with him is that he's that type of writer who, once you get a taste of him, you'd gladly read him write about anything. Yes, really. yeah, yeah. And it's difficult yeah. to say exactly why. I mean, if someone said to me, why exactly are you, why is Charles Williford in that handful of writers who you would write, who you would read like a shopping list by? Mm -hmm. And I'm not really exactly sure why, because not all of his books are great, or like we'll yeah. get to today, I think. But mm -hmm. there's there's something about his slightly, I don't know, cockeyed PTSD, yeah. laughing at the world, jaded, cynical view that I find weirdly comforting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think there's something askew about about everything that he writes, no matter what it's supposed to be. It, it it's it's got that kind of um, not as not as maybe extreme or out out there as as like a Sage and Suzuki, but there's a feeling of like he's given a job or he's given a genre to work in, and he can never quite like the basic right. shape is there, but there's something wrong with it. There's something slightly yeah. He can't oh. quite colour inside the lines, can he? <laughs> yeah, and that's what makes it. And, and you know, and he's a good writer with maybe more to say. In that same way that maybe, um, you know, he's roughly speaking, uh, you know, he would be a contemporary, although he would have been younger than Jim Thompson. But they mm -hmm. would have been writing around the same time in the later fifties, early sixties, for the same kinds of right. straight to paperback, pulpy, um, you know, presses. Uh, and to me. He's the closest to Jim Thompson in that way that Jim Thompson could also never quite just give you a. There was always something just a little bit right weird as well about Thompson's books. And oddly enough, I mean, I I think if you 
I mean, it's foolish to really try and do it, but I suppose if you had to just have like a batting average or, or, or um, I, I think you would have to put Jim Thompson in a slightly higher category of having written more straight yes. classics. But yes. there's something about Williford. I was trying to think about what the difference is. Uh, there's something a bit more earnest about Jim Thompson's kind of, he seems like exasperated to the end, like like trying to make sense of it. Whereas Williford's just like a fucking like <laughs> you can imagine them like I don't know, sit both sitting on like a a little hill or something, overlooking like a burning city or something. And you can imagine Jim Thompson might occasionally get up out of his chair every now and again. Oh, we should do something. And 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 Charles Williford would be like, ah, he'd be there like doing a like a, a watercolour painting of it or something, <laughs> yes. or, or talking about like which which hat to wear while walking through the smouldering remains yeah. the next day. He's totally resigned, it seems, to... Yeah. Yeah, uh, at his most cynical, at his yes. most... At his most, like, uh, I mean, something like, you know, this, right? The Shark and mm. Custer, which was basically... Uh, unpublishable back when it was written in the 70s. Nobody will touch this thing with a 10-foot barge pole. Um, it wasn't published until, what, 20, more than 20 years after it was written. Right. And when you read it, whew, yeah, wow, this book is a stone-cold bummer. This is one of the most, like, <laughs> just unrelentingly savage kind of pictures of m male friendship and, and, I mean, very blackly, funny i guess but like at a level of of like you know celine levels of dark humor yeah but know. but Not much more beyond, redouble um, right <laughs> much more less dense <laughs> yes, than... yes and it also reminds me as well every time i read willifred i keep forgetting i really should try and read uh, scaramouche by Sabatini because in one of his books that's clearly because another that's another good thing about willifred is he points you in an interesting direction yes yeah and it, one of his books starts with it might be one of, or, or it might be one of the Miami Blues Hope Mosley books, where a character, ah, oh, he decided to read Scaramouche again, and he he quotes the opening line, and it is something about Scaramouche, uh, you know, had decided, essentially, totally given up and just decided to laugh at life was the only way, and mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, okay. Combine that quote with what I know about Williford's take on the world. I'm thinking maybe Scaramouche might be something we should read. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's put that on the list for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but, we'll do so, the Fandango. Yes, yeah. I think. I mean, I'm trying to remember if the first, what the first Williford book I read was, but it might have been. It might have been this, The which Woman Chaser. It? Yeah, which is still maybe. Maybe my favorite, uh, maybe with Cockfighter, my favorite Charles Wilford book. Yeah. Um, something about the just the the frustrated artist element of the story about this the guy who wants to you know he works in a used car lot and picks up women yeah uh, for like cheap sex, but then is a frustrated artist at heart and wants to make this great film, but it won't fit. Like a Charles Wilford book, the film right. won't fit because it's not long enough to be a cinematic film, but not short enough to be shown on TV. But he right. won't compromise in any way and slowly goes mad as a result. Yes. And um, that ends, um, the, uh, seems to have been the same fate as, um, um, what's his name? Uh, um, Insect Trainer. Um, yes. Uh, Why am I blanking on... Jim, Tim Carey, thank you. Not Carey, yeah, Carey. yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, it's a shame most of his films didn't end up the way they ended up. Um, There's just no justice. No, 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 no. Which is uh, why, uh, which is why Williford is the way he is, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> that's why he has to laugh at the world. Um, and the, the woman chase as well is kind of a semi sequel to High Priest of California. Priest of California, yes. Right, uh, I keep wanting to yeah. call hip priest of California. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and then Wild Wives is another one that I loved, you know, just... Uh, right. And these are so slim to it. I mean, I, I like a book yeah. that reads in, like, an hour and a half, you know. Right, um, right. But, uh, but yeah, so the, we actually found a couple. There, there are more, but we found a couple that I hadn't read before and that you yeah. hadn't read before. 
Yeah. Um, one from uh, 1957, I think. Uh, that's the uh, uh, Lust is a Woman. Uh -huh. It's a great cover, actually. Um, yeah. And uh, who was and I? Couldn't, other... I couldn't figure it out. So the introduction has it as basically was it was it Beacon Books who had commissioned him to basically do like an Ori hit. Yes. Kind yes. of book, He's supposed to do a right? sex. Yeah. Which um, this is not. Because <laughs> he not can't ever do the brief. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, you yeah. mentioned briefs. I thought you were going to start talking oh, about yeah, that. Was, again. No, I was segueing it back All into right. my... Yes. Send him some pants. Pad. Send him some pants. There you go. That's for our other yes. listeners. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, and then uh, 1961's... Um, I feel like we were talking about 1961 quite a lot lately. Oh. Uh, in other contexts, 1961's... Um, uh, the death one, understudy, yes. Uh, understudy of death, which which has yeah. a surreptitious Dalek hiding. Dalek, I know. It's very disconcerting, actually. <laughs> What's that doing there? Uh, uh, is that uh, what was well, clear enough? This isn't I, I would I thought they just reprinted the original paperback of it, but it's not, it's an original one by one Paul Mann. This is the one for hard case crime. And it's quite good, right? I mean, really you could guess that. Oh, yeah. No, 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 it definitely looks uh, you know, yes. Abducted yeah, by the Daleks, Daleks, I think. Isn't, isn't that the sex? Isn't that the sex film with Daleks? Abducted by the Daleks. Abducted um, by the Daleks. Yeah, there we go. This yeah. the original. Abducted <laughs> by yes. the Daleks. Um. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, what I love about it as well is it has fuck all to do with the story. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again. Yes. Yeah, just make. Yeah. The brief there was make us a front cover that looks like it could be a sixties sex yes. book cover. And throw a Doctor Who villain in <laughs> yeah, if yeah, possible. Yeah. So um, we're lucky we didn't get like a Cyberman or something behind <laughs> the plant. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I guess we'll start with Lust as a Woman. That's mm. the that's the uh, the earlier one, right? That's the, yeah. his the sex book. Um, basically, basically, in some it's not great. I mean, I'll say that it's it's not it's not up there with the with the great Charles Wilkers by any stretch of the imagination. But no, it's, we're, it's we're clearly sweeping up the crumbs, I think. I yes, yeah. 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 Um, but it's certainly readable. Like, I, I had no trouble. Like, I was never bored. I was never... No, absolutely you know, not. Uh, ...checked out. Um, of the two, I think this is... This was the one I preferred. I don't know. Okay. I, I, maybe, yeah, just because it's a bit more... It's a bit more straight ahead, pulp... Kind of sleaze. Uh, the other yes. book is... Is weird and I don't quite know what the other one is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, but and this one seems more Williford in it. It has a very Williford ending. I thought, right, right, like that's that's very kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, take your characters and then um, wind them up and then dump them in the shit tank, which is kind of that's a Jim Thompson thing as well. Um, but Williford does it even more. Like yeah. there's always something just just grim about the way he ends. Some Grim, of his stories, and somewhat in this case, a, a bit of a almost existential in a way, right? Like, like it doesn't. It's not just it. It 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 points towards, even though it being very very dark, that that main character has almost escaped to a happy place of lunacy or something like. Uh, yes, yes. Um. So I mean, basically, what it's it's about it's about a young woman. Uh, Maria, who has come down from New York to Miami uh, with her friend. They've saved up enough money from their drudgery kind of uh, secretarial jobs in New York. Um, and uh, she... There's a there's a young artist, but... Well, I mean, he's, yeah, he's an art student, but he's working at this hotel as, a, as an elevator man. They kind of start... Not really a, an affair of any kind. He just has a crush on her. Uh, and on their very first date, he takes her out on the boat of a, a mega sleaze, uh, wealthy um, guy that he has. I, I guess he knows him because the, the guy owns the hotel, right? The guy is the hotel yeah, owner or yeah. some, somehow connected. Yeah. Uh, He's so basically made known. the classic mistake of meeting a hot chick who's decided to go out on a date with you. And he introduces her to Errol Flynn. Like, yeah, yeah. you fool! What, what are you doing? <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, so yeah, they they go on a boat trip, and basically this guy starts to to um, ply her with booze and and make her aware that he has this you know the means uh, to give her the high life if she will make some compromises. She's a virgin at this point, and there's a super sleazy dude called Tarzan who lives on the boat who uh, seems to be his muscle slash as we discover you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I was thinking <laughs> if they'd have made a film, Tim Carey would have been good for Tarzan. Yes, if it was made back then, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Joe, uh, Joe D'Alessandro types. So many like dead eyed, but also rangy. Joe's probably a bit too small, but somebody kind of just like a, yeah, just long armed and kind of dead eyed. Right, right. Um. So yeah, you're, you're right. Young Tim Carey, definitely. Actually, yeah, like like uh, Bayou era. The only trouble was, I think, if you would have given Tim Carey the, I think Tarzan has to be kind of silent and Tim yes, Carey and would flat. Have talk yeah, yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, he'd be wandering in and out of frame the whole time, <laughs> um, doing soliloquies about farts. Yeah. But, but yeah. So, um, basically, yeah, it turns out that that uh, he's more or less a glorified pimp, uh, pornographer, uh, to the wealthy. You know, he has rich clients. They come to his big mansion, and they he pr- procures women for them. And she's kind of the latest one in his. Uh, Mm. And our our friend Ralph. See, what's really interesting. I mean, you know, as I said, the book's not the book's not great, but it's got enough weird shades of gray. Like, exactly. Because you know, because Ralph does go see another hooker earlier in the story, which is a very sad, sad, scary kind of scene. Right? It's just grim. Oh, this is horrible. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um. Exactly. And plus, and- as well, when he in his righteous anger at the end. He's yep. not even really doing it for her anymore. No, or for love. At no, that point, he's just gone homicidal, right? He just wants... Yes. He's turned a bit incel, actually, in a way. Yes. Uh, Very much a proto, yeah, yeah. He's just angry. He's angry at the fact that, like, yeah, he's uh, he's been... Because he has been clouded around a few times by Tarzan and threatened. Yeah, yeah. And he feels like something beautiful has been besmirched. Yeah, but he no, so he, he can he no longer wants that thing, but it was wrong that it was besmirched at all, and he's going to set it right by dealing right. with the besmirchers. My little uh, note to myself was, uh, I would say misogynist, but the overall jaded misanthropy yeah. is ultimately for everyone, right? So <laughs> yeah. oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody comes out of this not stinking. Uh, yeah, um, I like the fact know, as well that um, I like that. Because it, it's never quite spelt out exactly what goes on at these weird rape parties or whatever is going on. Yeah. It's very specifically the girls come out and they talk to you a little bit and then they go off and you have to watch a cartoon from Mexico. Mexico. To give you some I ideas. Really, want to I see really, this cartoon? Yeah. I really wanted to see it too. I was like, yeah. Where can I? Where can I find this cartoon? Something? Does something weird video have a copy of this cartoon? Yeah, like a. Tijuana Bible come to life kind of thing, but not that fucking live action shit we watched for uh, no. the Furry Freak Brothers. Not that. No, no, no. Um, Although there is yeah. the other one. I don't know if you've ever seen. There is actually one. Is it called Sex in the Comics? I certainly have seen that. Yeah. Oh man, that's a that's scary. With the All weird the masks, and masks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's quite the dag wooden stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Around the same time as that, Gerard Damiano did his. Um, let my puppets come and right. like, it was just there's that weird time of like let's try everything you know um, something was in the cocaine <laughs> yes um so yeah that yeah, as i said you know and it's got lots of those little details that i that i just like from that era's writing like just depressing bo- boring pro- like drudgery job stuff like just the, the facts right. the nuts and bolts which is something that i think jim thompson always did really well was yes. to like give you the nuts and bolts of somebody's job and then introduce this intense, right, right, you know, the, yeah, uh, the drudgery of, of a, being a bellboy or, or yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, well, the the other element I really like again because Charles Lefford can't. It's it's like Marky e. Smith, right? He's fucking up the paintwork, right? <laughs> yes, and, yeah. there's, and there's like there's just when you think you kind of know where this is going, and all of the all of a sudden he introduces this really bizarre 
Spanish monastery themed motel that the main oh, yes. character stays at, where, <laughs> where the people who work there <laughs> dress in robes and have the tonsure. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, what the hell? And it angers our main character. Like, no, it's historically inaccurate. And he just yes, goes yes. on one. It's just bad architecture. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. It's like, oh, okay, this is an extra ring. You always got to read to the end with Ulf, right? Even if you think you you know you've got a handle on it, there's going to be yeah. some little gem. Yes, yes. Yeah. Take away. Absolutely. And then also there was all question about like her uh, Maria when she first shows up. She has her friend, her the the other typist. Peggy. So it's, it's intimated, yeah, that like they had some sort of semi lesbian relationship as well. So right. there's yeah. I mean, whether that's just hitting that mark of like we need a certain amount of, I mean, I there think is so. a, early on in the book. There's even a reference to like uh, what kinds of pornography may exist in this vault, mm. um, and some of it's very sketchy. So it's that feeling of like we need to we need to tick all the boxes for sleaze and filth and make sure our reader comes away feeling scummy enough that they yeah, got profit yeah. for their money. You but can tell Wilford is... isn't really that invested in it. No, because like... well, because the actual sex scenes are non-existent. Really, it's always just we we come up to the moment of or whatever, and then there's always the cutaway. Really, right? Um, you know, so it's not it's not pornography in the sense. I mean, that may have just been also the time in '57. You'd have to be very right. careful, right? You know, the other thing I kind of quite liked about it as well is it is very difficult to judge exactly. So that on on the one hand, yeah, from the title on down, although the title might have been chosen by someone else, there's, yeah, the whole, you know, you know, it's the, the woman's wanton lust is the problem or whatever. But it, mm -hmm. what I like about this book is it goes one step further. So the main female character does have agency in her own, um, yep. like, total conviction. Like, she's not she hasn't been steered wrong exactly. Like she certainly has been taken advantage of and has been exploited. But yeah. after a while, she's like, you know what? I'm cool with that. And like, she never comes round to the main no, hero no. putting her no. on the straight and narrow. And he's kind of yeah. more of a dick in a way. Cause he, you know, he's got these whole dreams of, oh, I should have, you know, hire a virgin and she'd stay in the kitchen and you know, give me baby. Yes, yeah, that. That's like, it's hilarious. I, yeah, I, but she's just like, uh, yeah, and she's like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm, I know I'm chasing the bright lights and the big city, and it's hollow and vacuous, and but that's what I want. Yes, and, and it, on my own instance, things. the other women who who are at the, you know, the parties or whatever, like they are very matter of fact about it. And yeah, kind of. Like, yeah, they've. This is the life I've chosen, and. uh you have to take a certain amount of downers in order to live yeah. this life. That's another thing. I just like the casual way that like, um, and in fact, both books, you know, and I could have done with some uh, Dexedrine really tonight myself. Right. Uh, the amount of speed that our main characters eat in these early Charles mm -hmm. Wilford books is really interesting to me that it was just, it's clearly not seen as a, a weird thing. Like, oh yeah, of course you, you know. I was wondering, there's nothing in his biography on, Wikipedia, if the, I don't know if Wilfred was a, a fond of Dexedrine and Tom Collins's, which both yes. pop up in, in both books. Although yeah. well, I, he doesn't like Tom Collins's, or at least Errol Flynn doesn't like them, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, but but do, man all the way. I do think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I, did, I think it was just a fact of life. I think people did a lot of amphetamines in the 50s and mm. 60s. Um, and I think writers especially did because it's a way to hit right. me dead. Because I mean, we haven't talked much about Williford himself, but you know, one of the things he and it shows up in the next book we're going to talk about that he was a newspaper man, right, for yes. a long time, yes. right. And he really understood the ins and outs of a newspaper office and writing on demand, writing to word counts, you know, working quick. But yeah, I would imagine uh, speed would help. Yeah. Right? Well, he's interesting as well. He's one of those people. He's one of those crime writers of the era, you know, um, who fits this eerily similar trajectory of being born elsewhere, having a whole lifetime's worth of experience, and then somehow ending up in Florida. 
yes. writing slightly twisted crime fiction. I mean, there's a whole bunch of these people, right? Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, for sure. Um, so it's kind of interesting in that because people consider him a Floridian, but he's not. He's like from Arkansas or something, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. But he's yeah. certainly been adopted as a as a native yeah. son, I think. And many of his books, including this one, right, are are set in and around yeah. Miami, right? So I mean, I think he is kind of the one of the first Miami crime writers, you know. And most of the ones that came later on, I, mo I mean, really most most good American crime writers nod to him, right? Whether it's it's Elmore Leonard or you know um, Carl Hyas and other people, we've you know we've talked. Oh about yeah, before. absolutely. I mean, you know, Carl they Hyas all... basically makes. Um, he makes airport versions of Charles. Yes, exactly, Lincoln. exactly. Yeah, and that's not a diss because I enjoyed nope. that one I read, and I might read yep. some more. But they they certainly do seem like Charles Williford novels, like made made slightly more palatable. Broad. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and like yeah, a lot so, more detail yeah. and uh, even more cartoonish. I think more than anything else. Yeah, uh, and, and, and okay. obviously much more. I mean. The other thing about Charles Willifan is he never really found fame and fortune until just before he died, which is a very Charles yes. Willifan thing to do, right? Yeah. Well, as was as was finally having a really, really successful character in a really successful book, and then immediately writing a follow-up to it that was so incredibly bleak and right. awful that his publishers were like, please pulp that now. Like, destroy right. that manuscript. Right. This, um, this was Miami Blues and the Hook Mosley character. And what was it called? Not a Grim Grimhaven? Was that the name Grimhaven, of it? Grimhaven, yes. yes. Yeah. Which you can read, it's floating about online, but it was never published. And then no. was kind of cannibalized for three subsequent sequels. Um, which yes. actually I'm kind of glad for because now we have all of them, right? So yes, yeah, you yeah. can enjoy Grimhaven and you can enjoy the other three. And the other three are, I mean, they're all, I suppose you could argue if you're going to be super seriously critical about it. There's a bit of a law of diminishing returns from the first yes. Miami Blues. You can tell he wasn't really super keen on doing a Hawk Mosley series. Series, yeah. But they're fun, and and they've got yep. some hilarious bits of like, yeah, like like all will of it. Like we said, yeah, it's we talked before a little bit about um, the you know the Stephen Thrower take on like Jess Franco. You either watch them all or you don't watch any kind of thing. Yes. And I, I feel Charles will live a bit like that. Like, yep. you're kind of all in, right? Like, I, I'm pretty mm -hmm. much going to read anything I'd I like to. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'd like I'd like to read it all. Um, and it makes sense as a big jigsaw puzzle as well, I think. The fiction, mm -hmm. the non-fiction, the, the memoirs, the, I don't know, probably a monograph about hats or something. It, yeah, it's yeah. all kind of, it's all yeah. one big piece, right? Um, and then, you know, speaking of, of Miami Blues, but like he's also a, a, an author who's been, I think, served better by film yes. than many others yes. uh, of, of his type. Right. Because Miami Blues is actually a very enjoyable film. Um, you know, that's the only Hope Mosley uh, movie. Right. But it's a very young performance by Alec Baldwin, mm. um, which is it's a great Alec Baldwin performance. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we have already, already mentioned Cockfighter. Yeah, Woman um, Chaser. Woman Chaser is great, a great film as well. Yeah, really, he's he's been served better. I haven't uh, seen the recent... Um, there's a bird... Oh, bird Orange, Orange Heresy. Heresy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got good reviews, I think, so it may be worth... Um, That's actually... Right I, I need to revisit. That is the only... Because I was just not in a good mood or something. That is the only Willowhead book I've bailed on with the Bird Orange Heresy. Um, I, I think I did finish it. It's quite different, though, than most of the other books. Yeah, that's what I, I wasn't yeah. quite feeling it. But I will. I, I've got a copy. I'll go back to it and then I'll watch the film. Uh, I haven't read Black Mass of Brother Springer or whatever it's called yet either. So that's another one where. That's the other, I think that's the other possible highlight that we haven't read, right? I think all yes. the other ones. I mean, they could be hidden gems for sure. But I think we've probably read most of the. The main the ones. Cold classics. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I don't know if I have much else to say about that one. It's, no. it's, a, it's a nice little pot boiler. It's a nice little, you know, gritty thing. And it definitely has an ending, which is funny because it, it opens and closes with basically the same. It's one of these things where we begin at a certain moment, at this climactic moment, and we flash back the rest of the story. We come back to that moment, but it doesn't go quite as I expected it to. Um, no. 
no. I think we'll, we'll leave it alone. But yeah, just definitely, wow. If you have That's a taste the... for Williford, yes, I think um, you should read it. And yes, yeah. Whether it, I don't know, it's difficult to tell because th there's pros and cons, right? Because you're already familiar with Great Williford, then this is slightly put in the shade by it. Yeah. So I don't know, it might actually be a good first Williford book to read because you can go up from there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Probably enough oddness to put the hook in as well. Mm -hmm. maybe. So I don't know if it would, what do you think? Do you think it would be a good introductory Williford? No, because it's a, Reasonably priced one as cheap as chips, yeah. so you don't have to think too much about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I remember the first Jim Thompson book I ever read was like um, Cabin Boy. No, that's that's a movie with uh, with <laughs> David Letterman and uh, Chris Elliott. What the hell right. is it? It's, it's something about cabin. There's a, uh, a anyway. it's one of the ones I haven't read, but I know what you um, mean. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and it was it, it's very much one of the lesser ones, but hmm. it grabbed me by the short hairs like i was i was immediately like holy shit this is intense and it's 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 one of the slimmer ones as well so it was like a really quick read but it's just simmering with rage the book is just like yeah like that yeah and i was just like whoa cropper's cabin i think cropper's that cabin. my yeah. uh not quite i think it's slightly one rung above that in the the thompson hierarchy but not considered one of his classics either the first one i think i read was the nothing man so oh, yes. yeah that was fucking great um yes Yes, I think that one doesn't quite get enough love. Um, is that the one that ends with two different scenes intercut? Like, oh no, line no line? that's um, that's another one. That that yeah, that one just has a berserk ending, right? That's that's like the There's a few of them that end. That's in like, just the, like the, the ending of Vanishing Point, right? Where they can't end <laughs> it any other way than the, just yeah. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so shall we move on to uh, mm. the understudy uh, for death? Understudy um, Dalek of Death. <laughs> yes. And I, it claims here the lost novel. So I guess it was originally published and then uh, disappeared for 60 years, something like that, and then has been brought back by... Um, hard Case Crime. Hard Case Crime, yeah. Well, well, I, you know, yeah. They're doing great stuff. I mean, if you look at yeah. it, their thing, has gotten bigger and bigger. I think we're going to do Sam Fuller's Brain Quake at some point, which is also uh, one of theirs... Um, but yeah, if you see that yellow, I just love uh, that logo somehow. Fine. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. something so simple but nicely rendered about it. It's just, yeah. it's the kind of thing that collectors like as well, isn't it? A oh whole yeah, yeah. Shelf have... full of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, they don't have like... numbers. They missed a trick with the numbering. Yes, agreed. Um, but it also reminds me of like the 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 uh, you know the original like the 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 term as I'm sure you know Jallo for mm. those things came from the fact that they were yellow right. spine, right? All right. the all the books that they were kind of yeah. Um so yeah this I don't know. They're I mean it's a great, it's great I, mean, I would argue that it's a bit I, I, I'm, I'm, again I'm not having a go and I haven't read some everything so it's unfair but it seems as if it was is like a like like a pure line of cocaine for a long stretch. And then as it got slightly more um the 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 remit broadened a little bit. Yes. Yes. So then it's slightly more hit and miss, maybe. But right. I think if you were to look if you were to, if you were to take the first whatever few hundred things that hard case crime put out, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I mean yeah. they might not tell you all because but it would be a hell of a run of mm -hmm. production. I mean it's a it's probably a more commercially viable way of starting a, like a groundwork for collection than trying to collect all the original gold medals, for example. Yes, yeah. Um, I, I, I think they went... Because Black Lizard were doing it for a while. Yes, yeah. But I think Hard Case Crime maybe did it with even more gusto, right? Right, and, yes. But the I mean, the other big difference is that Hard Case Crime also commissioned new... Well, that's what I was going to say about when the remake broadens is yes. maybe, yeah. But like, so Stephen King's written a couple for them. Um, yes. You know, Max Allen, Collins, people like that who are more yeah. contemporary crime writers. Um, Which might be but, fine, but I, I for me that... I know. Like, yeah, that weakens the brand yeah. a little bit. But that's just I, me being a finicky, uh, yeah, yeah. A finicky little twat. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, I'm very much there with you. Um, 
But they uh, changed the title to Finicky Twats. Finicky Twats. Yeah, yes, yeah. Finicky, Finicky Twats, Twats read. Read read books. Um so uh, the uh yeah, this one's weird. This one's weird. Yeah, uh, this it is... opens I, I opened... kind of understand why it wasn't republished yes. top, top of the list list to yeah. like bring back into print. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you know maybe the biggest surprise for me is is the slightly saccharine ending because it's a Williford book. Yeah, and there's a tendency in Williford, and in this way, it's 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 almost like him pulling a, pulling a fast one on me as the reader because I think I know how a Williford book ends, right? Mm. And then it doesn't end that way. Even though oh, at near, no. near the end, we're led to believe that it might. We're given a little jump scare, kind of like, oh, it, this is going to happen. And then, nope, it, uh, no. it's very too much delay. is kind of, I suppose, all right, fair enough. You, you yeah, did yeah. put I, the rug from under me there. Yeah. Um, I but did it's weird it because it works now. It works now, now that Williford has like a cult around him. But it wouldn't have. I don't think it would have worked like that when it was new, right? Because there wouldn't no. have been enough people reading. I certainly wouldn't have had this kind of context for the, the you know the work of Charles Williford, right? Yeah. So it's yeah, it's no, no. just as a standalone book. It, it's a bit yeah, it's a bit weird uh, in that it kind of it has this very grim through line, and then ultimately, yeah, it and it does have also... grim bits in it as well, right? It's not. It's not the ending. Ending is Akarin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Most of the stuff of along the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it opens with like a, a particularly like egregious right. Basically, it opens with a uh, a woman who has uh, done a murder suicide. Right. She's executed both of her children. Mm. Uh, one of whom is like a chubby boy scout who she shot in his treehouse, and then the other is her daughter who she's you know killed in the house and then taken her own life. And then our lead character, uh, who is um, Hudson, Hudson, yes, good name, who is a, a newspaper reporter who works on the like the night shift, basically, um, by choice, it seems. Yeah, and it's a uh, real small town newspaper. It, it's like a, a, in some ways, it's like a suburban noir, right? For some, yes, paper. yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and so he is given this job by his editor of, uh, you know, do a series on suicide. Do a series. Yeah. Like he's like, suicide's a huge problem here in, in the States, bigger than you think. And, you know, the, I don't know if these claims are true or not at the time, but like he says, you know, it's a bigger problem here than it is in countries that are known for, I think Japan is even mentioned. And so is, is uh, yeah. so so is Scandinavia. And he's like, but it's actually worse here. Um yeah, and yes. it's just, it's such a, he thinks it's such a daft assignment. Yeah. And he just goes through the motions, and, and I'm wondering how meta that is, because this book feels almost as if <laughs> yes. he was, handed, I don't even know what the original brief would have been for this one, but but he's clearly not, <laughs> he's writing around something, isn't he? And, and he's yeah, yeah. thrown in some of his picadillos. But it's not a crime novel. Like it, there's like oh, other, I mean, really? yes, it, 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 yeah. I mean, it, yeah, because there's no, the mystery is kind of like, will he get to the bottom of why a person would murder their ch their children and yeah. and husbands, right? Spoilers. And the answer is no. no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the answer is no. No, he's not going to figure that out. Um, so it becomes yeah, it's a it's a it's more a book of self discovery and figuring out what you want out of life and all this other malarkey. Um. And it's, it's unusual for Williford in as well as not just that it jumps around and it's messy, but it also has usually his steps quite tightly plotted and also in terms of there's not too much um, in the way of peripheral characters as well. But one yeah. thing that jumped out at me is how often their own son, Buddy, is mentioned but isn't in the book. <laughs> yes. To the point where I was wondering if that was gonna, if that was a clue, mm -hmm. and he was gonna turn out, you know, like his wife murdered their son or something. <laughs> right. I thought Years something ago. like yeah. that was gonna happen, but no, that doesn't happen either. <laughs> uh, and yeah, there's bits along the, but it does, it does feel like a scrapbook or something, like bits that wouldn't fit in other books. Right. Um, and there's a few good guys. This one made me laugh. Um, was it? Uh, 
I kept the one volume edition of Shakespeare's complete pl plays, along with a dictionary and a thesaurus on my desk at all times. From a blurb on the front cover of a John D. MacDonald paperback, I had clipped a quotation and scotch taped it across the face of my Shakespeare. I wish I had written this book, Mickey Spillane. <laughs> that was quite good. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I thought that was awesome as well. And, you know, um, one thing that I really like, actually, is this, because uh, it's, it's fucking perfect. It's an artist who really understands uh, the process. So basically, the reason he works night shift is so that in the daytime, he'll have time to work on his great play because he, right. he's really much better a writer than just a newspaper writer. He's he's going to be a great writer. And then every chance he gets, and he's constantly railing against his fucking wife because like she's making him take out the trash and do errands and stuff when he's supposed to be working on the play, mm. the great work. And every time he does get a moment of like, oh shit, I have free time to work on the play, he doesn't. <laughs> he finds an excuse to do something else. Uh, and I was like, that's, ex that's exactly it. I can remember yeah. all the way through my twenties feeling resentful every time Jen would ask me to go do something that I didn't really think was important because I right. I should be working on my novel or my art. And then yeah, if she did leave me alone, it was straight to yes. you were working on your you know, Subomi <laughs> collection or something like that. Yes, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I just it made me that was like that seemed very true to me of artists and their inability to actually get anything done. Um. Another thing as well that jumped out, so uh, we were talking uh, before about Charles Williford being good at pointing in certain directions that maybe we should read Scaramouche. The one thing that made um, jumped out at me from this as well, I was like, okay, that's something I vaguely heard about, but don't really know anything about. The play Lilium. He made yeah. it sound quite interesting. Yeah. And there's a Fritz Lang adaptation, which okay. Fritz Lang considered like one of his best films. Okay. That's yeah no that's it's I didn't probably I didn't think to look it up I had a strong feeling that it was something real from what yeah, I was really, yeah it yeah. felt like it wasn't a made up thing but I didn't actually look it up so um and then there's a, you know there's another kind of character who in a way like this is quite early for Will for this is sixty one right but he seems like he's written himself into the story as this because he did he did later on in life work at universities teaching creative writing like this right. thing that he. That in a way that he so seems to suggest is like a is like a hell for a, a writer like the app after sign of failure as a writer is if you end up teaching creative writing at some community college but right. whatever does end up doing it in his real life but yeah this this old fella who he visits and then he has nothing but respect for the fact that this guy has made this choice like i'm gonna live i'm gonna produce writing i'm gonna you know and then one out of every five pieces will sell and appear in print but that's that's good enough. I'm never going to make any money from this, but I need to do it for art's sake, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Which, like we said, prior to Miami Blues, seemed to have been. Yeah, very his, much. Yeah, his life. Um, but it's quite early in his life for him to be already flashing forward, like, yeah, no, this is this is how it's going to go. I'm never going to be successful. I'm going to end up seventy years old. Um, yeah, living in a. A gated what he does does he live in like side a gated community but because he's the watchman is like that as well R um, right right no yeah. that is a that is a solid character and and it is one of those things as well you i could read the fan fiction spin-off where hudson and that teacher do yep. meet up for that drink and yes. do discuss literature or something because you can imagine yep. charles will if it would slip in a whole bunch of other reading suggestions and so so again even though this is very definitely, this is probably the least interesting Charles Willifer book I have read to date, I would say. Yes, yeah, I yeah. I give another one that comes quite as close. But having said that, I quite <laughs> happily read the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a chore by any means. Part nope. funny, I liked some bits. I mean... Oh, I, another character I loved was the other one. Because it's again, it's so well observed. You know that this person has to be real. Because I went to art school, mm. um, and art school is it's an interesting place. So you're you know you're eighteen, nineteen years old. Uh, you are in a classroom with mostly people in your age, same age range, maybe. But then there's always going to be a few a few years older, and then there's going to be a smattering of like mature students. Uh, what what uncharitably called the talentless housewives. 
uh, oh, okay. by the other uh, teachers, or not teachers, well, sometimes by the other teachers, in fact, and right. by, the, by the other students, yeah. Uh, people in their 50s, 60s who, you know, um, and so, and I also did creative writing at university as well, right? And so this idea of the critiques, like that was so, you know, you mm. made your painting, you you've done your piece of writing, whatever, and then everyone sits around and talks about it and gives you feedback and tells you, you know, yeah, yeah. the idea of this old woman who shows up to create a writing lessons never produces any writing, but it's very specific, lengthy criticism for everyone else's work right. was like fucking perfect. That is exactly yeah. my experience of going to a yeah. Alpoke middle of the road college, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if this is the outer perimeter, um, I mean, yeah. if this is as bad as it gets, it's still then, pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Compared to yeah. a lot of stuff you have to suffer through. Um, you know, he has an affair. There's a there's a bit of sex in there. It's a bit more actually. It's a bit funnily enough. There's it's a bit more explicit than the one three years before that's supposed to be a sex book that we just talked about. That's true. That's true. Right. And he really enjoys. I mean, it's He really enjoys fucking his own wife as well, right? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Surprise. Yeah, so it's an it's an odd it's an odd duck. It is it's 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 uh, yeah. neither fish nor fowl. No, um, no. Um, yeah, I well, don't really know what to say about this, and I mean it's 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 for the diehard Willowhead reader, I guess. Um, yeah. And the thing is, if you're already one of those, you don't really need us telling you, tell you this. No. Yeah. But it's interesting. I'm glad I've read it because yeah. If if for no, no other reason, I feel as if I have slightly set out like a perimeter fence of like I, mm -hmm. I would be surprised. I'm it's entirely possible. I would be surprised if I read a Williford book like I don't know. Worse doesn't seem right. So just just not even uh, less satisfying. Then let's put it mm -hmm. that way. Okay. I I don't know if I'll, I'll if there's any less satisfying than this. It it could be, but I feel as if I don't know. He he's he's like incapable of writing anything totally worthless. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like no. If this is clearly this is clearly him flailing around. Yes, in this book is third, form. Third rate. Yeah, this is third rate. Charles yeah, Wilford, which no one pretty, wanted to reprint for close to sixty years. Yeah, yeah. But it's, still, it's pretty, still pretty you know, fun. Yeah, yeah, preferable to you know. A Da Vinci Code novel or something like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, and no a tenth question. of the length, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I had I had lots of fun with both. I laughed. I laughed during. I, in fact, I laughed more during this than I probably did with uh, the other one. Uh, I didn't laugh too much in Lust Is a Woman or whatever it was, um, mm. given that it was a slightly grimmer tale. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's you know, before he shows up. And he ends up having the affair with a woman, but he's kind of slightly, he's, he's not, he's not, he's irritated that she has a sleep crusty in her eye. Not, not like, it's, you know, like, like. Yeah. Again, that, that? that rings really true, right? Like you, you, you have the opportunity in front of you, you know, the thing that you've always, you know, dreamed of and you find the one <laughs> right. tiny thing. Flaw. Yeah, yeah. You focus in on and spoil <laughs> the entire thing. Again, finicky twat. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean I you know, I can I can obviously wholeheartedly recommend Charles Williford. Uh these yeah. two books may may or may not be your best entry point, uh, but they're they're still Williford and they're still lots of fun. I yeah. forgot to mention this one too, which is a collection of his short stories. It has right. one of my favorite covers, that Good crazy cover. painting. Good cover. Um but uh, but yeah, this is sh some short stories, and they're also all memorable. But, but certainly, if your time is immensely valuable and you mm -hmm. really don't have it, time for anything else, uh, I mean, read Cockfighter. Cockfighter, yep. Just uh, uh, yeah. not a story about uh, men uh, banging their dicks together, as you might think. Um, What's the? Um, I'll, I'll find it here because it, it is awfully good. The tagline. For the film version of Cockfighter, I thought was particularly mm -hmm. uh, clever. Uh, Monty Hellman film, uh, yes. great film as well. Um, here we go. No, that's a different poster. 
this is good this bit of the podcast isn't it yeah you, yeah perfect. You think that... i mean the thing about the thing about cockfighter is uh that the lead in the movie is played by warren oates who right. we have talked about elsewhere because he's one of my very favorite actors and it's a particularly demanding role and i think i don't even want to say why um because it's it's a very yeah. big part of the book and it's a big part of the movie but the fact that he's able to do so much so much with so little is I'm just sure. again a testament to his amazing ability oh, yeah. as an actor. A film as well that's still illegal in the UK because of the oh because of the actual writing. Yeah, and yes, I shall yes. paraphrase that because I couldn't find it, but it's okay. something along the lines of he came into town with his cock in his hands. And what he did with it was illegal in 50 states or something like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're totally right. I, I do remember that. It's Which is one of the greatest come-ons in, like, uh, you know, sleaze movie history. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's like it's an art film, basically. It's a great yeah, well, it's, art It's Monty Hellman. It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. an art film dis- d- disguised as an exploitation as film. A, yeah, as a drive-in, yeah. you know. Um, and works as both. Uh, I think. Hang on, is Harry Dean in it as well? Harry Dean's in it, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can't make a film like that without Harry Dean in there. Harry Dean said, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. We're rambling once more. A okay. bit like yeah. the study of, for death. Yes. So, until next time, exterminate, 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 doctor! <laughs>